Does anybody have the time? <laughs> Those of you who've been around a while know there's a big clock in the back. <laughs> Those of you who have been around for a while also know that was probably a trick question. <laughs> the time is now. The time is always now. This is, the, this is the moment that we have. When we say your new life begins with a new thought, the opportunity for the new thought is always now. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath out. The breath is always right in this now moment. And the next breath is in the next now moment. The reason that we use a clock to tell us what time it is is so that we can be in relation to other people and other events and other activities. Because I can plan with somebody else to be somewhere at noon. In which case, we can both look at a clock and do other things until noon, and then have that now noon moment together. And it turns out that that pattern repeats itself over and over and over again in our experience. Because there's only this now moment, but we have this whole description of time. Everything that's ever happened, we can describe. We have history. We have <coughs> our story. We have the torturous path that we've been on. We have the horrible things that have happened. Those dramatic events that we like to tell and tell again and tell again and over and over and over. It becomes our story, it becomes our drama, it becomes that pattern of who we are. And we get to continue to repeat that story and we get to continue living that experience that we've been living. And the path that we have been on up until this now moment does not necessarily control the next step that we're going to take and the path leading from here. Has anybody had something horrible happen and it turns out later on that that was the best thing that ever could have happened to them? Yeah. yeah. Everybody has one of those stories. Some people have dozens of those stories. Mm -hmm. And we'd be crazy to ask for the horrible things. Oh. Give me some awkward, painful, humiliating lesson that I can learn so that I can have something good happen in my life. There's a mythical story. The young one had been together with friends and family for as far back as time could remember. And suddenly the young one was ripped apart from everything, alone, thrown on the ground, beaten, shoved into the dirt, left alone and cold. <coughs> That's so sad. We all have sad stories, and we can all tell those sad stories. As I often like to talk about, whenever you go to the movies, there's three acts. There's the first act where you get to know everybody. Then there's the second act where something horrible happens. And a lot of times when we get to prayer requests and doing our healing prayer work, we're in the middle of a second act where that horrible thing has happened that our path looks like it's headed right off a cliff. This is awful. And it's really, really difficult sometimes to understand that the third act is ready to start at any moment. The third act always starts in a now moment. We always get to tell the story in that long entirety. When we go to the movies, the end of the movie already exists before we sit down in the theater. What's happening with our lives is we get to change the story every step along the way in this now moment. Take another deep breath in. And a breath out. It is this now moment. Does anybody remember a particularly fabulous breath that you took in, I don't know, 1991? <laughs> Dave does. <laughs> I don't know that I've heard that story. I do. I definitely have one of those because um, I used to be an avid scuba diver. And in 1991, I was in Cozumel diving with a friend of mine. And um, we were very deep. And that means you, we were using air very quickly. Uh, and I started out with, with um, uh, a light fill on the tank that I had rented. Mexicans, sick. 
this one, they had two, one wasn't quite full. It's like, no problem. So there we are at 140 feet, and it's like, yeah, I don't really have as much air in my tank as I'd like. <coughs> so I showed him what was going on, he and I shared air from his tank, and we made our ascent to the surface. And that breath that I took, that first breath of air on the surface, you bet I remember that one. <laughs> I remember where I was, I remember what I was doing, I remember who I was with. That was a very important now moment. There were a lot of breaths before that. There have been quite a few since. I'm still in the midst of them now. But every breath is in its own now moment. And we don't necessarily need to ascribe some specific significance to them unless we want to. So the young one was mashed into the dirt. I felt covered with all sorts of crap left in the cold, alone and dark, and just kept getting colder and more lonely. And that's a sad story. We all have those sad stories. And we all get to make a decision about what we want to bring into our life as the next point in the story. Because when we have that whole <coughs> path that we've been on, all those twists and turns and, and all the rest of it, we think we know what we're about. We think we know what's going on. We think we can project from the history what's going to be coming up next. When I was a scuba diver, we were into particularly technical diving. So we'd be on the dive boat going out to do a deep dive, and there would be newbie divers along with us. And um, we have very long fins. Most dive fins are about two feet long. Ours are over three feet long. Uh, it takes a lot of leg power to kick them, but once you get used to using them, it uh, gives you a lot of uh, control and, uh, uh, and, and flexibility underwater. And so the newbies would say, why do you have such long fins? My friend would say, so I can swim fast. Why do you need to swim fast? Sharks. And they'd say, <laughs> <laughs> they'd say you can't swim faster than a shark. And he'd say, I only need to swim faster than you. <laughs> 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 when we go into those questions, we think we know. We don't necessarily know. Letting go of everything that we think the path that we've been on has taught us so that we can be open to that next new experience, that next new opportunity, winds up being magical. It is sometimes so difficult to do to let go of not just the story, but the assumptions about what the story meant. When we're in that pattern where something's been a challenge forever, it's really easy to get wrapped up in it. Our friend James Mellon says, I know nothing. Now what can I know? I think that the reason the scuba diver wants to swim faster is because he wants to be faster than the shark. I, it turns out I, there's something else to know there. What time is it? It's now. The time is right now. So I got into a conversation this week about yoga, which, uh, by the way, the entire practice of yoga is about being in the moment. The <coughs> first sutra of yoga, and I think there are eight of them, uh, is now begins the practice of yoga. And the word now is atta, and it means now, and that's the first thing that they say in yoga. Anybody ever taken yoga class? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of yoga class. There are people who do competitive team yoga. <laughs> and I guess, I, I, you know, I guess that's fine. You know, in order for me to say that's dumb, I would have to be in judgment and I'm not the right guy to be having this talk in front of you if I'm gonna be in judgment about that. <clears throat> and it turns out that the yoga, um, the asanas and yoga are all very helpful if you're just going to get some exercise. Because they are wonderful ways to put our body in a particular position. Virabhadrasana 2, warrior 2, if anybody's ever done that. Okay, so as I'm in this pose, I'm getting a nice stretch in my left leg, and I've got a lunge going in my right leg, and I'm working on my core to keep my posture up straight. And eventually, I'm going to be feeling this in my arms and shoulders. And that's yoga size. That's really, it's actually very good for me. But the whole purpose of yoga, 
the entire purpose of yoga is to prepare the body for meditation. It's the same thing as a body scan. We sit down and do it at the beginning of a meditation. Now begins the practice of yoga. And the whole idea is to be able to stay in this posture and not be thinking about my arms hurt, or my leg is straining, or my muscles are doing this or that. <coughs> to be right here, right now, and just focus on my breathing. It's not to say that just doing one of them, just doing yoga for exercise, is bad. It can be wonderful to do that. But there's so much more. There's such an invitation to focus on that now moment, to focus on our breath, to take all of those pieces seriously and allow that next invitation. Because if you explain to somebody who's never done meditation, who's never done uh, a yoga practice, who's never been involved in anything like, the, like this, if you try to explain the benefits of meditation, it just doesn't work. They go, that couldn't possibly be true. How can my life get better just by sitting there doing nothing? And they start thinking that would be boring, that would be pointless, that would be a waste of time, whatever it happens to be. What we need to do is actually have the experience. To have that now moment experience in whatever it's going to be. And allow that new experience to inform us and give us something new. Because the story that we've been telling may not be the whole story. If we don't know the whole story, it's not like we're to blame. It's just that it hasn't been revealed yet. It's one of the really powerful things about practical prayer. <clears throat> if we don't know what the full story is, if we don't know necessarily what the role is that we're playing, but something seems to be really a problem, if we're like the young one and we're left alone and cold, lying in the dirt. We can open ourselves to the possibility that maybe there's something bigger going on. And we don't say, this is what I want to have happen. I want to be back with my friends. What we invite in that prayer is, I am opening myself to whatever is next and good and wonderful. And this is what I want to feel like. This is what I'm inviting into my experience for what's coming next to take this now moment and set an intention for the tone and the texture and the timbre of what I want to have in that next moment or the next period of my experience. So the end of the story is that the young one was actually a seed. It wasn't about being a seed. That experience which was so violent and painful and cold and lonely was that seed being planted and of course, what happened is when the weather turned warm, the seed began to change and germinate and grow. And then it turned out that it wasn't a seed at all. It was a rose. And up through the ground came this beautiful rose, which are on the one hand beautiful and fragrant flowers, and they're also really well defended with the thorns. So there are all those things that never existed in the seed. Never, it never occurs at that seed stage that that could be a possibility. But that's the invitation for us, is to remember when we're going through a negative experience and whatever it was that was good, that we love from our past is being torn away, or seemingly torn away, or no longer available or accessible. This is an evolutionary step. This is a growth step. This is an invitation for us to become something different. And it's always delightfully pleasant. That's not true. Because <laughs> we like to do the stuff that we've always done. People like to get into their patterns. People like to hold on to their stuff, their positions, their whatever. And evolution and our upward mo momentum and our growth, what Barbara Marx Hubbard describes as that upward evolutionary spiral, requires that things change. I love the notion of a spiral because a spiral is growing wider and it's going upward. It can, we can spiral downward too. But that upward evolutionary spiral is a path that brings us higher and higher. But what happens when we come back around and say, I've been here before. I've been going through this nonsense my entire life. And on the one hand, yes, that's true. And on the other hand, 
it's not exactly the same. Because when you get back to that next similar experience, whether it's my bosses, I always, I always work for a jerk, or I never have enough money, or I always get into bad relationships. When we get into the third bad relationship, the thing that we bring into that, Sounds like my life. <laughs> I was not telling a story about you, Dave. When we get into that third relationship is we now have the memory and the history and the insight that might have been gained from the first two. So we could follow the pattern and have a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a 20th, or we can say, you know what? Maybe in this next now moment, I'm going to let go of looking for somebody who can replace mom or dad or whatever that pattern is that I've been in and allow the love that's the truth of who I am to come into my life and have it show up in a new way. And the opportunity invitation for us is to breathe in, be here now, recognizing the gifts that we are and the gifts that we have, and breathe out, letting go of all of those assumptions and all of those patterns from the past. <coughs> this is the first Sunday of 2018. That has no significance whatsoever if the time is now. If the time is 2018, then we just celebrated New Year's and there's all of that stuff that this is about. So to whatever extent you want to attach some importance to that, this is your invitation. Not for a New Year's resolution, but for a new you experience. Your new life begins with a new thought, and the opportunity for the new thought is right here and right now. I will join you in knowing that those intentions, that that path that you're on is all unfolding in perfection, because you deserve the best. So it is. Yes.